Hi, I'm Dr. Kim Logan Nolan. And I'm Arthur Nolan. And welcome to Making It Work. Today we're talking about the last call. Arthur, why the last call? Well, there's some issues that exist with many of us, and today we have a special guest here basically dealing with substance abuse issues. Well, why don't you introduce our special guest? Well, today we have John Bodash. And John, welcome to our show. It's my honor to be here. No. It really is. We, we're really pleased to have you here. And basically what I'm asking you to do right now is just give us some insight about what has happened to you in the last year and a half. Last year and a half, I've gone through a transformation mm -hmm. that probably most people would not believe unless they witnessed it. Mm -hmm. And what, I happened, what happened to me was I was in such bad shape to alcohol abuse, physically, psychologically, spiritually, that I was pretty much unrecognizable as a human being. Really? Yeah, and uh, I was hospitalized, and through my subsequent recovery, and through the grace of God, I'm with you today. Mm. So how has this experience changed your life? Uh, about 180 degrees. Okay. Um, I'd been drinking for approximately 40 years. Oh my goodness. And uh, when the physical nature of the disease finally you know, got, took over and I was succumbing to that and my family deemed it was time to make a move into the hospital I went and under I went. Mm. For a few okay, days. wait a minute. Explain to us what do you mean under. What I happened? was basically on the list of he's not coming home. Really? I was in a coma, alcohol induced pretty much. Mm. Uh, my systems were failing, my liver was shutting down, my kidneys had shut down. Mm. Uh, my blood was basically an oil refinery mm -hmm. and uh, they, they worked very hard to get me to the point where I could uh, actually have a chance of surviving it. Mm -hmm. Now up until that point, you didn't really realize that you were as bad as where it was life threatening for you? No, any addict in my situation I think comes to the same agreement with themselves that it's not my fault, I don't feel that bad, mm -hmm. this is fine. Mm -hmm. When in truth, the opposite is what's going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the hard things about addiction is to come to the fact of reality, mm -hmm. that yeah, that is me, and it is my fault. Mm -hmm. Now, how can I be helped? Mm -hmm. And I turn to, obviously, the three things that drive me in my life is my faith in God, mm -hmm. I trust my doctors, mm -hmm. and I believe in myself. Mm -hmm. And God puts the belief in ourselves right there so that we can utilize that along with His grace and His power to make us change to the fact of not just for today or tomorrow, but permanency. Mm -hmm. permanency. Mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. Had it come to a point, like you say, you were drinking for 40 years. Correct. Had it come to a point where you, you say you believe in God, but you didn't have a relationship with God? No, I had a very nebulous understanding of God. Mm -hmm. I knew there was this brain being out there. Mm -hmm. I didn't give him a name. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect help. I didn't ask for any. Mm -hmm. I just sort of... Uh, blew the idea off because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm invincible. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody can touch me mm -hmm. until you find out you're not. Mm -hmm. And then when God steps in and says, yes, what can I do for you? It's not that so much as what can I do for God. Mm -hmm. and how about your family? How did they respond to what was happening? Uh, they were stalwart. They, uh, when they finally understood the depth, my wife Beverly, uh, took over immediately, mm -hmm. and uh, my brother and sister are very supportive. My parents have been gone a long time. Mm -hmm. I think one of the um, things that drove me to the addiction of alcohol abuse, family upbringing, there was a lot of alcohol around our neighborhood and our family, and then my mother passed away when I was 16 at age 54, mm -hmm. and it was an alcohol-related illness. Mm -hmm. and. Um, 
I started in the restaurant field, hospitality for 30 years, and that's a very easy place to get involved in addictions of various types. Mm. You know, drugs, alcohol, things like that, it's all around you. Let me ask a question. What do you think was the major influence for you to begin drinking? Fun. <laughs> it's for fun. Yeah. And it was a, a way of rebelling it somewhat yeah. at a young age. Mm -hmm. And as the rebellion turned into you have to govern yourself as you get older, that aspect totally left my life as far as control. And the alcohol had taken over by my mid-20s, early 30s, and that I was succumbing every day. Mm -hmm. um, and as time went by, my amount of, uh, you know, of drinking increased. And uh, to the point where as a year and a half ago, I was on death's door. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a gradient that uh, didn't happen overnight, mm -hmm. and you don't see it. You don't see it. That was another question I was mm -hmm. thinking about as you were talking. Many times you really don't see what what's going on. You don't you don't feel that this type of circumstance can happen after experiencing long addiction. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. such as what forty years of drinking. Correct. And then uh, another thing. Uh, I mean, piggybacking on what Kim was saying, you had a family origin that was drinking, mm. you know. Yeah, so this was an acceptable collar. lifestyle. Yeah, blue collar and that there wasn't a lot to do. Mm -hmm. You know, father worked afternoons at Ford for 41 years. My mom raised my siblings and myself, my brother and sister are much older than I was, mm -hmm. so they waited 11 years to have perfection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, um, the influences therein from when I was a small child of the, the parties, every holiday, every backyard barbecue, there was just tons of, of alcohol involved, all the neighbors. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a blue collar setting. I don't want to blame it on that so much as it is just at the time the social mores allowed that more. Mm -hmm and people didn't understand what we understand now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you went into a, a recovery process. Uh, apparently, you went into uh, one of the addiction facilities. Or yes, something? I went into an addiction facility in Canton, Michigan, uh, Oakdale, and they're quite helpful. Um, they have a very difficult job because you've got 70 or so residents, 70 or so different personalities, and 70 or so different cases. Mm -hmm. You can't put a blanket over it. Every individual has their own type of addiction mm -hmm. in the way it is mm -hmm. as far as level, mm -hmm. as far as one to, what it's done to them and what it's done to people around them. Mm -hmm. And they focused a lot on, on God and getting us started mm -hmm. in the right direction in, with that as an anchor point. Mm -hmm. Because they know that when they leave, let people go, there's not going to be 100% success. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of recidivism mm -hmm. when you let people on the street that have not come to the conclusion that God is in charge mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, you have to answer to yourself, to him, and to the people around you. Mm -hmm. Had you had several relapses through this when you said to yourself, I'm going to do this, and then you went back out again? Yeah, that was in October 2009, I believe it was, when I was first into rehab. Well, like toward winter, actually. 2009 and when they when I got out two weeks later I said boy I beat this thing this mm -hmm. is great I'm fine mm -hmm. it lasted until October mm -hmm. wow. I was up hunting by myself in the northern woods and I said you know there's a party store here just one is not going to hurt mm -hmm. well then uh, 12 months 10 13 months later I'm in Beaumont Hospital and they're trying to unhook things Oh my goodness. So I, I, you know, I thought I gave it a good shot, mm -hmm. but again, I wasn't thinking of God at the time. Mm -hmm. So you, you really believe that the Lord's spiritual life, you know, for oh, a purpose. Absolutely, absolutely, for a purpose. Mm -hmm. When I woke from my alcohol coma and I looked around me, uh, the first prescient thought that I had ahead of time as I came out was four words. Who can you help today? Mm -hmm. That was intended for me to hear. Yes. Then I knew that God had given me some kind of mission or ministry that I would go out and try to help people in my circumstance before it is too late. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I escape by hair. Mm -hmm. you know, there's many people that are close to that, some maybe not close, that still need mm -hmm. to know that the Lord is in charge. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is the key. God is in charge. God is in control of our lives. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says in Philippians 3.14, I can do all things through Christ 
which strengthens me. Not some mm-hmm. things, not little things, but all. Mm-hmm. And, and, and at times we tend to want to tie God's hands. Mm-hmm. Don't tie God's hand. God can free us all mm-hmm. from any addiction. Mm-hmm. And now, how are you now, John? You know, tell us about what are you doing now? Well, uh, my church that I chose to join is in the Dearborn Heights area. Mm -hmm. And the family there has been absolutely sterling Mm -hmm. in taking me in Mm -hmm. and teaching me. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever there's a little problem or a glitch in my system, they're there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just been a glorious opportunity for me not just to learn about the Lord, but to actually communicate Mm-hmm. through him mm-hmm. what is the proper thing to do because every morning there's a message all mm-hmm. right you know, and uh it's still the same one for me who can you help today mm-hmm. wow. do you have a favorite scripture that you stand by or stand on well uh, john 23 is always the number one mm-hmm. why know, and because it's so profound it explains jesus very succinctly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I believe that the people, even that one scripture, and there's some in Matthew that I mm-hmm. really enjoy. And as far as the Old Testament, uh, any story of Abraham is mm-hmm. very well worth mm-hmm. studying. Amen. You yeah. like stories, though, don't you? Um, yeah, I've been known as a spin a tale or two. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you're an excellent storyteller. Mm-hmm. And, and as a matter of fact, uh, one of the things that I recognized when I first met you was that you had exceptional skills in telling stories. Mm-hmm. You know? Some of them are even true. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe yeah. that, you know, because you're, you're, you're an author as, as well. Is that yes, I penned my first book, and you were instrumental in getting me to think in that direction. Mm-hmm. And I'm very happy to get that as a start. Mm-hmm. to allow people to understand what an addict's life is like. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, some of it's humorous, some of it's tragic, mm-hmm. but uh, I just hope it affects somebody out there somewhere. Mm-hmm. You have no problem telling your testimony, being transparent, you know. Why are you so open, you know, even to come here on making it work, to be able to tell your story? And I understand, to be able who can I help today? You know, because people tend not to want to be transparent. They don't want to let people know, because we know secrets can kill. They can destroy lives. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But it has saved your life to be so transparent. Well, you can't help anybody if they don't see who you are. Mm -hmm. Excellent. You know, they, uh, you have to be able to put yourself out there as much as possible and hide nothing. Mm Mm-hmm to gain their trust, number one, and number two, from your own standpoint, from my own standpoint, if I don't explain who I am, then I don't feel I have all the tools available to me Mm -hmm. to be able to help anyone out. Let me go back to family, you know, your wife, uh, Beverly. While you were going through this process, you know, was it hard for her to see you in this condition, or had she come to the realization that you were gonna leave her? Um, she had known for quite some time and did her best to stop it. When everything came to a head, um, she stuck by me stalwartly. Mm-hmm. Um, to this day, she's still my chauffeur until the doctors say otherwise. Mm-hmm. And she's my physician at home with keeping my prescriptions all normal. And if I'm missing mm-hmm. by a half hour, mm-hmm. I'm hearing about it. Yes. Mm-hmm. And her work with me has kept me on the path that I am on now, mm-hmm. which is forward. Yes. And, you know, it's typical marriage. We always have our little ups and downs. Who doesn't? No, right. you're not, not no that not. doesn't happen with no, you? No, no. I want to come and live with you. Too. <laughs> no, you can't live with us. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's instrumental that you have the people around you that are going to be resources yeah. to you mm-hmm. and that, that, that have enough faith in you and love you so much that they will be able to sacrifice on their own. That's amazing. To be able to help you along. And I've, it goes it, it goes very noticed. She might not think it's sometimes. <laughs> so some things I do are still not quite right. <laughs> but uh, at the same time. But that's marriage too. I mean, yeah, you're, you're yeah. working on relationships. But at the same time, I don't know of anybody on this earth that I've ever met that would be able to take on the job that she took on and be that's successful amazing. at it. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Loving wife. Mm-hmm. Um, children. Do you have children and grandchildren? Two adults and f- six grandchildren, mm-hmm. three greats. Aww. Not bad for 106. <laughs> but uh, they're all a good, solid family. Mm-hmm. And, 
you know, the holidays are always well noted. That's so in my checkbook notes it quite a bit. <laughs> okay. Then let me let me excuse me, Kim. Let me ask this question. Okay, we, we talked about family. What about friends? Now you know, after forty years you develop some friends that are strictly drinking partners, you know. Yes, so how is that, you know, that transition for you? Well, that is one of the main points of being an addict is because you're accepted into a part of society that has the same problem you have and it's like, hey, look at us, aren't we great? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not against, you know, going to a football game and, mm -hmm. you know, hoisting a couple or something like that. That's fine. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of when it gets to be an excess okay. or I can out drink you. Okay. And that's the kind of friends that I was with. Uh -huh. Now my friends are different. And amazingly, a lot of the people I mentioned in my book are coming back into my life oh. from 25, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're saying, we wonder what happened to mm -hmm. you. As I was saying, the friends that I've made and the ones that are coming back are different than the ones I had before. My new friends are very God-driven, family-centered people. Mm -hmm. The ones before basically were what's in it for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found that a lot in the chosen career I took. You know, the hospitality business is a very noble business. Mm -hmm. And I worked in some very fine places. And it's a learning experience about human beings in general. Mm -hmm. But the temptations of the alcohol on site and I don't know how many wine tastings and things like that wow. I went to. Okay. And after a while you think, I'm a pro, I can do this. Mm -hmm. When in reality you're a rookie for your whole life at this mm -hmm. you know you, there's no learning in alcoholism mm -hmm. it comes afterward when god says time for the lesson mm -hmm. have you learned it mm -hmm. because i don't have to talk to you much anymore if you've learned it mm -hmm. but i'll be here for you you know our topic today is the last call and in uh, society or in the world in nightclubs and bars and places where alcohol is served 1 30 2 o'clock a.m the last call, the last round for drinks. But it's more significant to John because the last call was his life. And the imprint of that in the forefront, when you woke up and you said you had the tubes and you were connected to all these wires in the hospital, what that mindset did you think, I'm going to die, this is it for me? By that point when I was fully conscious, I knew that God was there to help me. Mm -hmm. And he wouldn't have gotten me to that point to be hooked up. They had a you know fire hose putting blood into me and things like yeah. that. He wouldn't have allowed me to get to that point if there wasn't a purpose. Right then I started seeing a little bit of a purpose. It was nebulous and very hard to come by what it actually was. But then as time went by and I started getting gradually a little better, a little better, a little better, then I saw it fully mm -hmm. that God wants me on this earth to provide something. And it's been no relapse? You've been no. clean since when? Uh, it'll be, let's see, 19 months and uh, 15 days. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. Congratulations. Uh, every day is a different day. Every, every so day is a different day. do one day at a time. Yes. One day That's true. Mm -hmm. It is quite true. A lot of people say, oh, I've got this licked. Mm -hmm. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really powerful. Now, tell me mm -hmm. about your motivation for life now. Mm -hmm. You know, what does this whole ordeal mean to you and what are some of the desires that you have? Well, my motivation in life right now is, number one, God has given me this opportunity to help people if I can, mm -hmm. whatever regard it takes to help someone along, even it's the simplest thing. Mm -hmm. uh, a few weeks back, my wife and I were leaving church and it was a very elderly lady standing in an arthrox and she did not have a ride. She walked all the way there, almost two miles. Mm -hmm. wow. And we said, you know, and God put me in that position at that time to open that door and see this lady there. That's tiny, tiny things like that mm -hmm. that show his presence. Or the larger things where you actually can save a life by somebody, you know, to paraphrase is the baseball pitcher and author Jim Bowden, mm. you spend uh, your whole life gripping a beer bottle and in the end you turn, find out it's the other way all the way around, mm. you know, all the time, you know, it was the other way. And uh, the, the beer bottle is gripping, gripping you. you. Right. And when you get to that point, then you have a realization. And then when God gives you the message and says it's time to do something, mm -hmm. then you do it. And I've been fulfilled in that regard because, number one, my health has returned. I'm not 100%. Mm -hmm. And she's still got to be the pill person every day and make sure I'm on that regimen. But I've been able to get back into my beloved outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, 
helping on a, on a refuge down mm -hmm. south of Detroit to restore the wildlife refuge down there at Humbug Marsh. I've been able to do my own gardening, finally, mm -hmm. and little things, you know, here and there. Mm -hmm. I look forward to actually tromping through the woods someday right. again right. on my own, unencumbered. Mm -hmm. But uh, those are the things, the blessings that God is bringing back to me. Yes. And my mind is cleared up so I can actually read a book now. I couldn't read a book before. Couldn't read a book. And, and you're also considering to go back to college, is that correct? Uh, uh, yes, I've enrolled at Madonna University uh, in Livonia, and I start my uh, series basically in uh, addiction studies, mm -hmm. and I hope to be certified in addiction studies mm -hmm. by the uh, end of the second semester. Mm -hmm. And then my advisor looked at me and said, John, I've got your transcripts from your old school. Why don't you finish your bachelor in psych? Mm -hmm. I said, well... As long as I can be like uh, Arthur Nolan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a lot of hard work there, okay. John. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I'm looking forward to that, and that is a goal that God has given me. Yes, to a say, desire. He knows I can do it. That's mm -hmm. right. He's given me the strength. Mm -hmm. yes. And every day when I wake up, He's there, mm -hmm. help me to crack that computer code to get on those sites mm -hmm. and get ready to go. Mm -hmm. And it's just now up to my brain to figure out if I still have study habits mm -hmm. and can keep things retained. Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to come back to you. You know, when I think about what you just said, I think about Hebrews 11.1. 1. Mm -hmm. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. If you have the faith of a mustard seed, God will give you desires of your heart. Absolutely. And he, he, he hears you, John. Mm -hmm. He hears our prayers, and he, he wants us to flourish. He wants us to prosper. He wants us to be all that we can be in good health so that we can serve him. It's about mm -hmm. service for God. Mm -hmm. That's why we wake up every day. What can we do to serve others? And God receives all the glory. I like that, yes. what you said. Another thing is, one of the things that I think about is that, especially with the ordeal that you've gone through, mm -hmm. that you've hit a rock bottom that you were on your way out of here, wow. but the Lord gave you an opportunity to make amends because what's important is he wanted to use you. He probably wanted to use you a long time ago, but you were you were not ready. And right. you, you were not at the point in which you could, could be used. Mm -hmm. And now the things that you're doing now is like phenomenal. You look different than the first time that I've, I saw oh. you when you came in to see me. Oh, you know, wow. but I hope I do. You, you, <laughs> yes, you definitely look different. I mean, you look motivated. And and I know that the relationship between you and your wife has has improved mm. because you're doing a lot of positive things to mm. make it work. Yeah. And that was one of the things that was really a concern for you. So, you know, I encourage you. Well, it's almost like God had a stopwatch. Mm. And you let me go on for 40 years years of drinking and finally went mm -hmm. your race is over time to get to work wow just as simple as that mm -hmm. so ever since then every day I get up is a blessed day mm -hmm. yes every day I look forward to doing something whether it's just in my garden with the flowers and thanks to my genius wife with her planting skills mm -hmm. and we're surrounded by that and we've got a restful place to be to read to study and I've got two good, wonderful parishes I attend, mm -hmm. uh, St. Linus and Dearborn Heights and St. Anselm right down the road from me. And again, the families here are very, very loving and caring. Mm -hmm. And that is all, that gets you off the starting line mm -hmm. and helps you to the finish. I like that. Say that again. It gets you from the starting line to the finish, basically. That's beautiful. Yeah. You know, Arthur, in today's society, um, not just our teens, but a lot of adults are struggling with substance abuse from adolescent years into their adult life. Yes, and, and teens um, just may get introduced to it. Mm -hmm. Some One of the things that I'm concerned about when you talk about teens, you know, recently we did an article on K2. Mm -hmm. K2 is the synthetic marijuana mm -hmm. and the things that it's really doing in, in our community mm -hmm. and how a lot of our young people are using this synthetic marijuana is causing a lot of psychotic effects on their their whole lives. Wow! You know, so uh, substance abuse to me is just uh, really devastating. Yes. But unfortunately, what happens is you you may start out where you think you have control over it, mm -hmm. or you can stop anytime you feel like mm -hmm. you want to stop and it just creeps into your life and before you know it, it becomes such a habit that it becomes uh, 
uh, life threatening. You don't even recognize yourself. No, you don't have time to do anything about your appearance or, or who you are because the most important thing for you that day is how do you intend to celebrate that day with what drug or what what alcohol? Um, for me, that's, that's the important thing. For me, it was uh, is it eight o'clock yet? Is the <laughs> store open yet? Yes, eight a.m. in the morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Starting it, at that's 8 what it turned into for me. Mm -hmm. A way of life. Yeah. You know, um, we have plus, a few minutes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Plus hiding a little few things here and there around the house. Yeah. No, you wasn't the type of person to hide you a, hid a your bottle alcohol in, in, the house? in the house. Cases. <laughs> cases? Seriously? <laughs> no, a lot. A lot, but not cases. But <laughs> right. it, was, it could have gotten to that point. Yeah. You know. Um, the, that's one of the draws is being able to think that you're getting away with something. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sneaky. I'm mm -hmm. good at this. Mm -hmm. There was a young lady I was in rehab with. They found her on the floor of her bathroom she's supposed to be wrapping Christmas presents and she had a broken bottle of tequila in one hand and a full in the other one laying passed out in her bathroom after everybody went to bed and when they checked her clothing she had hundreds of dollars in her coats and her shirts and her pants just so she'd have money when she wanted to get tequila. Mm. My, my, my. That's why you think, you know, hey, I'm, I'm sneaky. I'm that's, that's true. You know, you get to a point where you want to beat the system or, you know, you want to show them nobody I, can stop me. If well, I that's the outer directed self. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm better than you. Mm -hmm. I'm smarter than you. You know, you can't stop me. That's an addict's creed. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, listen, we have about two minutes. Mm -hmm. John, I want you to look at that camera and I just want you to tell somebody to hold on and they can, God can save their lives and your closing thoughts. All I'd have to say is that God is here. He's here for you. He's here for all of us. And is 24 seven. He never closes. Mm -hmm. And when you're in the deepest depths of your darkest hour, a lot of these, um, please look to him, be faithful to God. He'll be more than faithful to you and continue your life in a very positive and loving manner so that you too can help people. Wow. That's powerful. Oh, John, we really appreciate you coming well, on, yes. making it work. Keep making it work. Yes. Keep making it work. Well, Arthur, another, you want to say one I last say, thing? You have a wonderful program and good luck with it. Continued oh. success. Oh, thank you so thank much. You. Oh. Basically, I think we're at a point now where we have to recognize that we have to make changes in our lives that's going to be beneficial. Sometimes those changes are diff difficult. The decisions that we require to have a better life is there. You just have to step out and have faith. My uh, wife, Kim, we, we go back and forth because she always believes. She always has faith. And sometimes when I get a little weary, she just come out and say, you need to have faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. John had faith and he still has it. So if you are weary or have some difficult yeah. point in your life where you're having some, some trials and tribulations, don't give up. Have faith. Okay. Well, Arthur, listen, it was a wonderful uh, opportunity to hear more information about substance abuse. Absolutely. Listen, we want to thank you for joining us on Making It Work. I'm Dr. Kim Logan Nolan. I'm Arthur Nolan. And you need to continue to Making It Work. Make God it work. bless. Yeah.